Well, if you need any convincing of how badly the PM stuffed up the voice referendum, listen up. Treaty processes with Indigenous Australians are now being dumped or shelved because of the no vote. The states are now so terrified by the public reaction, they're running away from plans that were already underway. This is all because of Anthony Albanese's appalling handling of the voice vote. He had the chance to save it, but he ignored all of the warnings and drove the bus over the cliff. And do you remember when he was here in July? I asked him about his commitment to the three elements of the Uluru Statement from the Heart, voice, truth and treaty. And Alwa kept on saying that treaty had nothing to do with the voice vote. And whenever he was asked about it, he argued that treaty processes are already underway around the country. Treaty is uh, currently uh, being negotiated in, uh, in Victoria and in the Northern Territory. So those processes uh, are, are occurring. So that was the line he used over and over and over to deflect from the questions being asked. It was a case of don't look here, look over there. Well, guess what's happening now? States are walking away from treaties because they've been sent a message from voters through the failed referendum, a referendum that could have been saved if only the PM had listened. Your mildly popular voice is going to bring down the overwhelmingly popular and long overdue recognition for Indigenous Australians in the Constitution. Don't risk it, PM. Ben, Don't risk it. Ben, I'm not risking it. He risked it and he missed it by a long way. Only 39% of Australians said yes to his two-pronged proposal. Almost 61% said no. And now hopes of a treaty in Queensland appear to be doomed. The opposition there has promised to repeal existing legislation. And so the Premier says, well, we can't go ahead with it. It needs bipartisan support. Queensland's Path to Treaty Act passed their parliament in May with support from both sides of politics. But now the Liberal National Leader David Crisofoli has backflipped and reading the room, Anastasia Palaszczuk has backed away too. Anthony Albanese needs to understand this is his fault. He made it happen. He refused to move and he caused it to fail. And you can bet your bottom dollar the same thing will happen in New South Wales. New South Wales is backing away too. Because before the last election, Chris Minns was supporting the idea of a state-based voice. He was smart enough to put it on the back burner and not make any big moves in his first term. Now he's watched what's happened nationally and there's no way in the world that he'll be proceeding. Labor's upper house leader Penny Sharp says a state-based voice is not our current policy. Chris Minns says we've got a mandate in place to begin the process of a treaty but he won't say if he'll take any proposals for a voice or a treaty to the next election. Well, I can fast forward for you and tell you he won't. It's dead and buried. And the Indigenous leaders who fought for these reforms only have one person to blame, the captain and coach of the failed referendum, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. And it really adds up when you consider the mistakes that he made along the way and all of those warnings that he got. And it's not like he can deny it. The audio's all there. I was begging him. This thing is going to fail, PM. Please, take the win-win. Take the win on a legislated voice. Take the win on a referendum recognising Indigenous Australians in the Constitution. If not, you risk a lose-lose. And that's what he got. And now the loss is spreading. It's spreading to Queensland, spreading to New South Wales, and Anthony Albanese, you are to blame.